My name is Anaya Thompson. Most of you know me as the former 15-year-old cashier of McAllister's Deli on Shod Road. For those of you who don't know about this incident, on Monday, November 21st, 2022, I had a 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. shift. Around 7.30, I was working register when I decided to ask one of my coworkers to take over. It just so happened the next person in line was someone with a badge. Before I walked away, I made sure these customers were taken care of by a coworker of mine, at which point they felt like they were being discriminated against. I overheard one of these officers ask my coworker if I did not take their order because they're officers. They then complained to my manager and were asked two more times if they would like to place an order. They replied no and walked out. Immediately after this incident, Facebook posts were made and McAllister's received tons of angry phone calls. I do not apologize for doing my job and handling a situation with decorum and professionalism in which these officers did not do. Since then, I have lost my first job and been forced to watch my name and character be drugged through the mud and destroyed via social media because of Kimberly Glenn a communications director for the Knox County Sheriff's Office who, found to, who failed to do her job accurately and has still yet to face the consequences of her actions. Kimberly, Grant, Kimberly Glenn actions created an unsafe work environment, not only for myself, but for my coworkers and the customers of McAllister's. I leave you with this. Number one, if I was anything other than a brown girl, would this have happened? Two, was I targeted because of who my brother is? And number three, Where's the accountability for those who choose to spread misinformation about me when I was only doing my job? When will they be held accountable? Thank you. Angela Hill. Madam Clerk, next <coughs> item please. Item 53, discussion item of the incident involving Knox County Sheriff's Office and 15-year-old teenager at McAllister's Deli. Commissioner Lundy. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I do want to thank uh, Rick Roach, if he's still here, and Will and uh, Calvin for coming out and speaking. Um, we have to do better. And I don't, when I left the last commission meeting, I think pre people pretty much know it's pretty much frustrated. And I left here in tears, and my mom was like, watch your blood pressure. <laughs> so I gotta do better, but it's hard because I feel like my voice is not valued. As a woman, as a leader, as a black woman leader, which I call the triple threat in society, I did ask for the sheriff office. I did contact Sheriff Spangler on January 5th, asking for the officers that were involved at the McAllister's uh, location who were, I guess, responsible for the loss of Anaya Thompson, 15-year-old child who just so happened to be the sister of Anthony Thompson Jr., who was shot by Knoxville City Police in the bathroom of a local high school, Austin East, which is one of the predominantly black high schools in Knox County. Rick Roach was the one that brought this to my attention, so I'm definitely double grateful for him. And what went through my mind, I'm like, how ironic. I seen the Facebook post before I knew the details. And then I learned it was Anaya Thompson. I'm like, how does this work? Like, how, how like two years ago, her brother was shot dealing with, we're dealing with the police and law enforcement and black community thing. And then she comes up, lose her job because of, a different department, but still law enforcement with the sheriff department. I feel like it was a sign. It's a sign that we have to face what's going on. It's day after Martin Luther King Day. What day is it? January 17, 2023. But in my spirit, it feels like 1960. I did receive a response because I know people was contacting me. Have you heard from the sheriff? I will read his email that I received this morning. Commissioner Lundy, Happy New Year. I am, a, I am receipt of both your email and letter. I am unavailable to attend the workshop. Additionally, my officers nor any 
other Knox County Sheriff's Office representatives will be attending. However, if you wish to make an appointment to meet in person, I will be happy to accommodate you. If you would like a copy of our social media policy, one can be obtained by emailing Public Records Custodian. He gave me the email. I just want to publicly say I'm not meeting in a private meeting. I asked for this on November 30th. Before I wrote the statement, when I found out that she lost her job, I texted the sheriff. Can we fix this? I know this is a big misunderstanding. I'm just thinking, can we just apologize, do something real quick and get her job back and then we can, you know, just let it go. That's not it. He just wanted me to let it go. So I did a form I was making a statement. I wrote my statement, which was, was published in the media outlets. This is the first conversation through email that I had with him today. And then they don't have the, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The guts? Mm, what's another word? Y'all can help me with a word. No guts. N huh? You're right, no guts. No guts to show up when a 15-year-old was put on trial. She came at the last meeting and stated her case. But here we go again. No one cares. I can't help but to believe that if any other of my commissioners will have requested them to come, would they have come? Or furthermore, if they didn't look like how Naya Thompson, will we even be here having this conversation? These are real words. Most of the emails I received were from white middle-aged women. Women, they the ones telling me it's called, it's racism. Try not to use the R word, because when I say racism as a black woman, I'm overreacting. So I just let everybody else say it. Is it racism? Was this targeted? People believe it's targeted. She knew, I mean, people knew at the uh, McAllister shop that she was Anthony Thompson's sister. Did someone behind the scenes say she works here? I'm not sure. Make sure you read the article that comes out in Knott's, uh, Knott's New Sentinel tomorrow about her story. She's a woman with goals. She's way braver than I am. She wants to be an attorney. And guess what? She gets to remember, at 15 years old, I lost my first job because officers said that I denied them service. Oh, poor officers. Oh, 1960. We dealt with that as black people. We deal with it today. We don't, we don't post it on social media. One argument one would say from the sheriff's office, they never said her name. They never say how old she was. But guess what? When she was still at work, some one of her coworkers seen that post and that broke her down. A few minutes later, after having that incident, how, how does a 15 year old post to process that? You let me know. How, how does she post to process that? And then she's getting damaged on social media on trial, like she created the biggest sin in the world. But no one from that office from the sheriff's office decided to, you know, let's sit back on this situation. Let's analyze it. Is this real? It's, it's, very, it's, it's very cowardly and it's very disrespectful and it's very racist to me. So since they didn't show up, it don't hurt my feelings because guess what? I knew they weren't going to show because bullies never show up when it's time. I want to thank my team. I would not name them. But I came up with another draft solution, and I will be contacting the law office to make sure if I need to make any amendments. But it is about our subpoena power as a legislative body. 
um, to subpoena the officers involved, uh, then also Sheriff Spangler, Communication Director Kimberly Glenn, and all the records and communications that happened between that time and December. I did not want to go this route, but my love and grace gets the best of me. I just wrote a simple letter hoping that people will come have their statement, because it's only fair that when there's more than one party involved, everybody has the right to speak, right? I, I, I believe that's true. Um, I didn't want to put my commissioners in position. I need a two-thirds vote to even subpoena. And I know that it gets very sensitive and not targeting anybody on this committee, but I just know how society is. It gets very sensitive when it comes to the black community and law enforcement. So I didn't even want to bring my commissioners into a point that they have to vote and, and support. But, you know, I'm going to have to do it because... She will never forget this, ever in her life. She will carry this for the rest of her life because people are insecure and they're bullies. I'm disgusted. I won't let this go. It's already been trending across social media platforms. I know it's been viewed over a million times. People are talking about Knox County, and it's, it's not good. And let us remember, just cause Anaya Thompson looks like me, she's our child. She's Knox County's child, and we were voted to protect the people and the citizens of Knox County, especially young children. I want to thank God for giving us this moment. I want to thank God for the call to justice. I want to thank God for transforming the hearts of the people as we move forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I am complete. Thank you. Commissioner Fraser. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Moyers, I have a question. Is it customary that a commissioner go through the open records process to obtain um, a county department's policies and procedures? Customary, I, I don't know that it's customary and not customary. I'm not that familiar with situations where the commission has asked for records from an elected office holder. Um, I would I would like to think that, that an elected office holder would provide the records to the, to the commission or to a commissioner who, if asked, but they are constitutional officers and they can set their own policies. So, so I guess that would answer my next question about, um, is it left up to the individual departments, the decision to make their policies and procedures, or in this case, general orders, public? Well, there, there are, of course, different departments in Knox County government. Some of them come in under the county mayor, most of them do, but others are constitutionally elected officers and they are given a fair amount of latitude to uh, operate their departments in the manner they see fit. Thank you. Commissioner Jay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, open question for Commissioner Lundy. If you pursue the subpoena route, do you also intend to subpoena uh, Anaya, the co-worker, and the manager, McAllister Stelly, so well? Um, I did not include Anaya, but it will be the uh, CEO of um, Southern Rock Restaurants and the area manager of McAllister's. I'm sorry, just, I couldn't hear that. The Southern Rock Restaurant CEO and the area manager of McAllister's, but I did not include Anaya on this. I guess I'm curious as to why, if you want to get to the entire story and you've referenced both her and her I, I co-worker and the manager and the officers and Ms. Glenn and the sheriff, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want everyone to be oh, testifying to the to their side of the story? Well, yeah, I mean, that's fine, but I, I figure Anaya Thompson gave her testimony December. Well, I put her through that again, but here we go. 
we got to put the fit to your own trial. So if, if this what is recommended, I would do that, and I would talk to her how she feels about that. She's very strong, so she's, she'd be okay, I think. I don't want to speak for her, though. But she's already state. I just want to make clear, as people are probably watching, she did make her statement on what happened uh, the last commission meeting. And also, she will, uh, I think, in the newspaper tomorrow, her statement will be included in there. Thank you. Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a few comments to make, and I guess I want to feel, I guess I want to be like Paul Harvey. What's the rest of the story? Uh, what hasn't been brought out in any of these questions and the stuff that's been going on is Ms. Thompson's brother that was shot, was shot because he brought a gun to school. Wait a minute. Talk about what you know about. I'm speaking. He was shot. I, I think this is destroying our community and this is destroying the relationship. This is not about race. 331 uh, sir, officers. Sir. 300. We can openly say that. That's sir. To a whole community. I understand you're upset, but please refrain from speaking out. 331 officers were killed in our country last year, 2022. 64 officers were shot dead. We've got a lot going on with gun violence. Now, Ms. Thompson was not fired because this was not a race issue. Officers went into an establishment, a restaurant that's privately owned, and if that restaurant wants to have a policy, we give law enforcement a meal, they're free to do that. Just like any business is free to give a Boy Scouts anything, Salvation Army. I just wonder if the victim advocate that spoke to us last month, how much therapy or counseling did they help Ms. Thompson when she lost her brother? Maybe they needed to do some counseling then to help her get through that. Maybe they should have done some counseling then to see what she needed to be able to work in public. She didn't have to work at McAllister's. So all we're hearing is she was fired. My point is not saying that, you know, it's unfortunate what happened to Ms. Thompson's brother or that she got lost her job, but she was free. She had the liberty to not <laughs> work there. And if McAllister says we give free meals to officers, if you don't want to honor that, then go work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And to come in here and make it a race issue to this commission, to divide our community and make this, this is not about race. Mm -hmm. This is about respect. Mm -hmm. They came in there to get a meal that they are customary given a meal. And she was fired because she didn't want to uphold McAllister's policy. And then we want to make it a race issue. I mean, when it, when it calls for race, let's make it an issue. This was not a race issue. I mean, I'm, I'm just sorry that we're, we're, we're talking about this. 1960s, there's nothing about this. There is no proof that this girl was fired because she was black. She was working at McAllister's. She didn't have to work at McAllister's. But for her to not, to get fired because she didn't uphold, McAllister says we, we give that policy, and then they were told one of your employees didn't serve us, they fired her. I mean, what, how is this a county commission issue? I, I don't understand. This is just dividing our community. I, I'm just, I don't see why, if we're gonna put Ms. Thompson, this is something she is gonna remember. But I hope she doesn't remember to every time something happens in her life to use a race card. Thank you. I'm going to call it Rick Roach to respond. Shame on you. Oh, no, no. Shame on you and anybody else Sir. on this county commission that, uh, that even thinks that anything Sir. that the 
I apologize, but we do have to follow our commission rules and... Okay, fine. I'm going to address the issue. Here's the issue. Sir. Three county deputies come into McAllister's on that evening. I, I apologize. I, you haven't been recognized by the chair and Commissioner Lundy, I apologize for this That's too. That's fine. Um, I don't know what to do in this situation to recognize uh, Rick Roach. Um, I've already been identified. I'll say my name again, Rick Roach, Knox County. But this is where we are. Commissioner, I didn't call this a race issue. It looks like it. But let me tell you this. The people who call it racism look like you. They didn't look like me. They look like you. And I'm so sorry that you feel the way you do. But as a woman, I know I have to respect your comments, but I totally disagree. I think they're inconsiderate. First of all, Anaya has been in counseling for two years. Second of all, she's homeschooled, and she wanted a job because she needed friends. She wanted friends. She wanted to be in society. We are insensitive as hell in this county, and I will continue to say we in freaking 1960. I am complete, because if I say anything else, I'm going to end up cussing. Put that in, put that in the news. Thank you. May I be recognized? Let's let it go, Rick, because we don't, you know, last time people were uh, arrested for advocating for that community. Again. We, we will sign up, sign up to for let the you next. know what kind of a, a low-down dog he sign is. Sign up for public forum hey, for next Hey, Rick, thank you. Let's sign up for public forum next week, okay? Do that for me, because we want to stay compliant, because, you know, sometimes we get arrested for for speaking out loud. We don't want that to happen. I appreciate you for coming. I'm out. Y'all have a good one. We're never going to move forward, ever. Okay. And that's why it's hard for people who live in this district, in office for this district, of a mostly majority minority community while we in pain because everybody wants me to forget mine we have a 42 percent poverty rate in Knox County among blacks and people say you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and guess what a 15 year old was trying to pick herself up by the bootstraps and she got fired because somebody got insensitive about her not serving them. oh okay cool we straight I'm out God bless everyone. I pray that you find Jesus.